Hello. You are listening to the Carol Connection with your host, Jerry Carol. Hey everybody, welcome to the Carol Connection. Glad to be back. Um, I want to take a chance to shout out last week's episode, episode 86 with Garrick Santos. He's a certified personal trainer. And on the podcast, we pretty much talked about his journey into training people, into fitness, pretty much the entire stuff like that. We talked about his college experience, and then we talked about why he decided to leave college to pursue fitness. And it was a really great discussion. So you can check that out at the carolconnection.simplecast.com. Also available Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all the major listening platforms. So for today, bring you guys another great guest, uh, Josh Tram. Well, thank you um, for having me on. So I am a junior at Seacock High School. I um, play football, of course, and I do um, track, indoor, and outdoor. And, um, you know, football team is really important to me. Something, you know, you know, you played football. It's a brotherhood. Yeah. So um, that's something that's really important in my life. Um, you know, like you, I also like to lift weights, you know, it's not just, a um, physical aspects, um, from lifting weights. It's also the mental aspects that you get the mental be- benefits as well. Um, it's really great for you. Um, big reader as well. Um, so much knowledge in reading, I guess you could say that, um, it really gives you a, a big advantage in life. Um, but yeah, I've been living in Seekonk since I was three, Went all through Seekonk schools, and you know now I'm in my junior year, heading, heading into my senior year of high school. Yeah, perfect. And we'll dive into uh, each one of these different aspects um, more throughout the podcast too, as we we get into it. Um, so, like I mentioned to you off the podcast, uh, the beginning we talk about family dynamic, kind of like how you were brought up. So, whatever you're really comfortable with, yeah. you could share right now. So, um, we um, I. We, um, before we moved to Seekonk, we lived in Cumberland, Rhode Island, and then um, we moved to Seekonk, um, 2008, 2007, I believe. So we've been here for about 14 years. Um, ever since there, we've lived in the same house, and it's um, it's really been great. I have uh, three sisters, two um, older than me, one younger than me, um, mom and a dad, and, um, you know, it's great. We have a really close family, um, you know. We always, we're always, always, you know, talking to each other. We spend a lot of time with each other. And, um, you know, it's really great to be able to have that close family because there's a lot of people who don't. So um, it's something you really have to appreciate. Um, but being raised, um, we're always, we've been raised to, you know, you got to look out for each other as siblings. You know, you guys are, you guys are, you know, blood related. You guys come from the same parents, you know. So you have that, you have that duty, you know, to look out for each other, you know, checking on each other and be there for each other at the end of the day. And that's something that um, I think all of us could attest to is that, you know, you, you have to look out for your family. And when you're brought up that way and then you transfer that over into football, it's the same concept is that your your, your teammates are your family. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. And uh, you talk so eloquently about it, too, because siblings are like our first relationship as we're growing up. Like, I think and that's why I love talking about these things on the podcast first, because a lot of the time we don't we all come from different backgrounds. We all have different family dynamics. So I think it's always super important to start off a podcast, kind of figuring out where you come from and how you were raised, because it sets the tone for, for the episode in general, but to let the audience know, I mean, we're not famous people. Like it lets, the, it lets, it lets everyone know like where, where we're coming from with, with our thoughts, our thought process and all those things. And I know having my brothers was a huge reason why I was the way I was because I was able to like rough play with all that. Yeah, and we yeah. all played sports for the most part. And it was, it was awesome to have. And I played, my dad was coaching a lot of my sports too. So have him, involved in us growing up was like a huge aspect and i think just growing up because it's always interesting i don't know if you've noticed this in any of your friends too that are only children that there is sometimes a difference that you can notice in certain people that they didn't have that so much of that socialization and obviously it goes too with different parent households too because obviously we live in a time where um a lot of households are broken Mm -hmm. and that's something i've talked openly about on the podcast is that i'm super blessed to come from a household where my parents are still together. Yeah. And like, that's very underrated uh, nowadays because when you look at the statistics of like people who get into trouble and crime and drugs and all these different aspects, a lot of the time it comes from broken family homes. So the home is where a lot of 
the foundational work is done as we're like growing because obviously when we're children, we need our parents. Like we don't know this world. Like so it's it's interesting to hear that and hear where it comes from. And I love that you made the comparison into sports, into football. Yeah. So I want to turn into like as you're growing up, uh, what were some of the sports? I know you mentioned a little bit off podcast, but for the audience, like what were the sports that you were kind of interested in? So I was one of those kids who played, you know, all year round sports. You know, you had basketball in the winter, baseball in the spring, uh, you had football and um football in the summer once you get to like second grade and I even in the beginning early stages I did soccer which is kind of funny to think about now you know what I mean so um I played all those all the way throughout um eighth grade and then you got into high school and um it's a whole different ball game in terms of sports um when it comes to that and football in high school is completely different it's um it's not for the faint of heart Thanks. you know yeah. you, you, you gotta care you can't because if you don't care you Coach is going to know and you're not going to want to do it. That's the, that's the thing. See, when you're, when you're younger from, you know, second to eighth grade, you can, you can play football and just not care. Mm -hmm. But when the commitment gets more and you're actually doing a lot harder work, you know, when you're in high school and you're not committed, one, it's going to be shown on the field. And two, you're not going to want to do it. You're going to quit. I've seen countless guys who've played with us and then gets to high school in there. They're not playing anymore. And it's because they don't have that commitment, which, you know, I respect them. If you don't have the commitment to not do it and, you know, you um, put your time into doing something else that you're passionate about. Not not just like you're there for social hour. You know what I mean? So um, when you get the football and then I played basketball um, freshman year mm -hmm. um, in the winter um, and then and then. Um, COVID hit, obviously. So spring sports, there were no spring sports. I was going to do track anyways um, due to an injury I got um, from baseball with in terms of being able to pitch. Mm -hmm. So a shoulder injury, so I wasn't able to pitch anymore. So I was planning track and field first year, try it out, heard some good things about it, you know. Um, obviously, COVID changed the entire thing, you know. Yeah, we'll get into the COVID yeah. stuff in a little bit. But, but, um, but yeah, so when when you're going into high school sports, you have to be extremely committed to that. And and, it, and it's really rare that you find people who are three sports three sport athletes who play football mm -hmm. because football is an all year round commitment, right? When you don't have games, it's off season and it's time to work, you know. And so to 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 some extent, other sports they they're kind of like a distraction in a way, unless you know football is your number one sport. If but if football is your number one sport, then then those other sports can kind of take away attention and time and effort you can put into the off season and getting prepared for the next season. You know, so I think there is definitely a drop off between the people who play um, all year round, right. And the people the sports all year round. And then there's the people who um, just focus on football, maybe do a sport here or there in the winter or the spring, but are mainly dedicating the off season to um, weight training and all that stuff. I a hundred percent agree with you. And I'm glad you actually brought this up because this is something I, I firmly believe I actually quit baseball my i think it was my sophomore year i still played rec ball because like that was fun with my friends but like school ball like it just requires like like you mentioned it it requires a certain level of dedication that it's not for the faint of heart like it really isn't it, it becomes a job like it is essentially is a job and it's kudos to people who do sports and play in who do sports and then have a job because it's, it's a lot of fucking work plus you have school on top of that you're juggling all these different things and like you mentioned, football is an all year round sport. It's very competitive. And especially if you want to play into college, the collegiate level, it is very, very competitive. And especially, and I love that I have you on because we're two different, um, how do I say this? Not generations. I mean, I guess kind of, but like, um, what you're experiencing right now in terms of like coaching changes and things yeah. like that, and we'll get into that in a little bit, is very similar to what I did. Obviously, different coaches, yeah. but like we kind of had some overlap with the same coach, Sean mm -hmm. Vernon Crawford. Um, it's with football, that was my favorite sport too. Yep. And I definitely, the way you talk about football is the exact same way that I used to talk about football. Yeah. So it kind of lets me up, and I love seeing. Someone so passionate about it, and guys, check out his highlights. Like his his huddle clips, fucking fantastic. Um, you have mad talent, and like you have a very bright future ahead of you. And it's is I'm glad that I have the opportunity to like talk to you and pick your brain about seeing where you are mentally and seeing how COVID too is affected where you're approaching that. And we'll obviously, like I mentioned, we'll talk about that because you're the first person I've had that is currently still in high school mm -hmm. on the podcast, yep. and this is such a unique experience because. 
I've not completely, but I've been in your shoes. I've been yeah, obviously a little shorter and smaller shoe size, but like still, still same mindset in like the way you approach it is like the exact way that I would approach it. And like, I definitely want to give you like a, like a round of applause. I don't know I forgot the button is. I'm not going to do it and fuck it up. But like <laughs> it's football, man. It's, it's, how do I say this? It's literally like a game of war, essentially. Like oh, yeah. you, there's serious injury involved and obviously all sports have serious injury, but like the damage that football could do to you as a person, like it's serious. And like, it takes a lot of commitment. And like you mentioned, a lot of people tend to fall off as you hit the high school years. So in terms, what do you, at this point in time, football is the the main sport. I think you mentioned track and field too, but like that, I I look at track and field kind of like as like a supplementary, like it helps build towards football. Like, yeah. So like, I'm assuming that's how you do it too. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, track is just something that's like, okay, you know, you can throw shot put, um, that would, that would help you better than, you know, um, playing these other sports, you know, and the good thing about, um, track and field is that the same coach for shot put is also the football coach. Mm. So you're going to, you, and he does, um, he does outdoor track as well. So you're having your football coach as your coach just for a different sport all year round. So, you know, get to interact with them. You know, he, he, you're, you're in touch with him the entire season. It's a whole different dynamic when your coach is in the building as a teacher. So it's, you know, something you got to appreciate, but in terms of, you know, track and field, you know, it's, you know, there's gonna, it's just like baseball, there's going to be slumps in terms of throwing, you know, it's not like when you're running, I know running's a little more technical than I'm going to say, but like running, it's not like just run fast. You know, when you're throwing shot put, it's, it's extremely technical, mm. right? And it doesn't, it's not just like, okay, you know, big guy, Chuck shot put, you know, it's, it's a little bit different. It's because I've seen guys who are, who are smaller, but throw shot put further because of their technique. And, you know, as someone who's not, you know, a technician, I'm more of a, okay, let's just, you know, like put the guy on his butt in front of me. You know what I mean? In football. And it's not, I mean, it's technical a little bit, but it's more so like just overpower the person in front of you instead of like, okay, let's, let's make sure, you know, we're turning our hips the right angle and all that stuff. So um, it's, it is complimentary to football, um, you know, and supplementary to football, but you definitely have to appreciate football way more, obviously, um, you know, the objective, the brotherhood, all that. It's just, it's great. Yeah. That, that was another good point too. You hit like the brotherhood aspects yeah. because I think sports are so important in the sense of building a lot of our socialization skills as we're growing up because you're you're technically competing and battling with a lot of your brothers. Like you're going to war with ancestors, we're we're including. Uh shout out Cammy, she's fucking fantastic as well. And I had her on the podcast. I think it was episode thirty three. I could be wrong. I actually got I shouted out my buddy Eric's episode. I think it was forty I'm not gonna mess it up. I got it I got it right last time. I'm not gonna do it again. I think it was forty four. But and that's crazy. I just start. I remember it's so side sidebar. This is just for me and you. Um, when I do these podcasts, like I literally envision everyone that I've done a podcast with me across from me. So it's like that's really cool. It's 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 fun to do these things, and like it makes me appreciate like like social media in an aspect because I'm able to do these and share it with people that we're able to have awesome conversations because this is like our first real interaction in person. So like yeah, and you know ability for us to have this conversation at the depths like that's most people don't do that no so like no. and also again kudos to you to have the confidence and be vulnerable enough to come on a podcast at your age like mm-hmm. very like honorable and very respectable like there's not many there's not too many people that i would have granted the right to come on the podcast at your age because like you never know where people's heads are at that age like i know i definitely no. was i yeah. definitely was <laughs> iffy in some areas but like you have your head on straight. You know exactly what you're trying to go for in the near future. Obviously, the far future. We yeah, none yeah. of us know. But like, you're doing all the right things, and you're putting the building blocks in the right places. And like, I think it sounds like you have a lot of the right people around you, and that that's the biggest biggest part in high school is having the right group of friends around you and the right coaches and the right yeah. like a support system. You know? Yeah. Your your surroundings are extremely important. Like like for example, let's say um. Let's say, you know, let's think about like animals and the ecosystem. If an animal is not in the right ecosystem, it's gonna, you put a polar bear in the desert, it's going to die, right? But if you pull, put, um, you know, 
polar bear and Antarctica, it's going to thrive in most scenarios, right? So your who you surround yourself in, the, the environments in which you place yourself into have a big impact. And unfortunately, a lot of people, they can't choose their environments. You know, you're dealt these cards and this is the environment you're stuck in. But a lot of people also, they can choose the environment and at least like who you are interacting with because you only have 24 hours in a day. You can't change that. So um, obviously, you have leap days, which 23, 25, but um, you, you, you cannot change that. So it's like, what, how, who are you going to give your time to? What are you going to give your time to? Is it going to be things that are just not going to, you know, not going to get you far in life? Or is it going to be things that, you know, each day, you know, you're adding another block, you know, and it keeps on building up. And eventually, you know, you'll start to notice and you'll, you know, have a better life. But again, who are you going to surround yourself with? That's that's what it comes down to is because it's not all just about you can't do this on your own. You need help. Right. Whether it's from, you know, friends, family, you know, people you just met, you need help and you got to You got to look for help to the right people. Yeah, no, that's fucking some wise work. Sorry, I'm trying not to swear as much in this episode, but that's very wise of you to like to have that mindset. It takes some people a long time to develop that mindset. I mean, that's obviously kudos to your teachers, your parents, everyone that's been around in your family to help mold you into the right um, categories to have this type of thought process yeah. because that is it's rare nowadays to have people to think as intelligently as you do at an age that you are at. It's, it's impressive and like because I've talked to a, a variety of different people and a lot of people aren't able to like vocalize themselves and articulate themselves the way you are and that's very impressive and that's a great point because. I think I was telling you a little bit earlier, like the only thing you cannot get more of is time. That's the one thing that is always, you're always running out of each day you wake up, you get less time. There's a, we all have a shelf life. We never know when that day it's going to happen. Yep. So where you put your time matters. Like a lot of people will focus on the money aspect of things and money is important. We live in a, in a capitalist society, whether it's right or wrong, I don't really want to argue that, but this is what the cards are for our situation. Yep. And it's important to have um, like a career to make money, to support yourself, to have food, to, if you want a family, have a family, but money comes and goes and you can always get more of it. Yep. Time you can't. So who you're putting yourself around is so, so important. And that's why like, Nowadays, and obviously it's easier because of COVID to limit who you're seeing, but for me, I limit the people who I'm connecting with. I stick closer towards my family. I stick closer towards my very, very close friends, and then I stick to my podcast guests, yep. people who I want to converse with and build uh, connections with, and hence connection. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so like, it's building all these different relationships, and like now I'm extending like that that. Uh, branch to you to allow you to have like a different like contact to like bounce off ideas and because yeah. I've been in your shoes and from a little bit of a different perspective obviously I'd probably say you have a, a brighter future in, 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 in football than I did but the way you approach it is very similar to what I did and like mm. just keep hitting the weight room and all yeah. those things and I think you'll be very successful in that I want to turn it into um as you entered you entered um high school Obviously, when you're a freshman, COVID happens. Um, when did the coaching change happen? Was that sophomore year? Yeah, so um, coaching change happened 2021. Um, it be it happened in June of 2021. It didn't become official until, I think, like July 1st. So um, Let's backtrack before. Let's do the, the coach. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Freshman so, year starts. Yep. Um, seems like everything's normal in the yeah, world. Yeah, right. You know, and then, boom, COVID You're enjoying high school, all that. You had a pretty good football season, you know. And, um, you know, out of the blue, here comes COVID and March 13th, Friday, March 13th, 2020. So last for basically a regular day in school and you're in virtual for the, until the summer, which is a whole different ball game. Um, the biggest thing in terms of sports is not that you missed the spring season from a football perspective. It's that it's that summer going into your sophomore year of, of weight training and lifting and the off season that you missed. So that definitely had an effect on, you know, the, the seniors who graduated last year, these seniors in our class, um, that not having that that whole summer of lifting, and unfortunately, a lot of kids just took this as a extended vacation. Some pe you can tell, you can definitely tell the kids who took it as a vacation and the kids who still work to the best of their ability, because there's going to be a big drop off between the kids who were consistently working even throughout the pandemic, um, and those who just said you, you kind of just gave up in a way, like you know what, I'm just going to take a break, right? I'm just going to be done, and a lot of those people fell off. Yeah, it, it's difficult. Cause like I, get, I, I'm, 
I'm thankful that I didn't, I'm not in school at this time period because I don't know how a lot of people, I know a lot of people that probably would have fell off. So like, I'm not surprised to hear that a lot of people struggled to stay dedicated to their sports because when you give people the ability to kind of slack off human nature, we're as humans, we're innately lazy. We look for the easy way out on things. So when you're given the option to kind of like do whatever people are going to indulge in certain behaviors and be more relaxed, whether it's Netflix or video games or eating or whatever. And they're not going to, they might not work as hard. There was, I saw it was like kind of like two, two clear paths in the beginning of the pandemic where it was one, you stay around, don't do anything or two, you get better. And I, you, I agree. It was the perfect opportunity for self-reflection and opportunity to get better because it's a challenge. Like it's a difficult scenario. So that's all happening. Um, what was it like to kind of when they canceled, was it sophomore year that they canceled? Yeah, that was a big blow that entire summer. We were still having captain's practices, so we were getting together at the field, interacting with each other. So that was good. And we were just all basically waiting. You know, we were waiting for the announcement. Are we going to have a season this fall or are we going to potentially have a spring season or worst case scenario? Are we not going to have a season? And you're looking at a senior heavy class and those guys work hard. I mean, I have a lot of respect for the class of 2021 played with them for two years, kind of three years technically, but I have a lot of respect considering how hard I know that they worked and to see that they didn't have their regular senior season, you know, that just, that, that, that hurts to see because, you know, they, they deserve to have a regular se- senior season, you know, that, that Thanksgiving game that they didn't have and, and the homecoming game that they didn't have and all that. And, you know, having their, you know, the stands packed with your friends and family, you know, on Friday nights, it's, it's something that they lost out on to, um, and, you know, the spring season, we had seven games, but, you know, you could only have two visitors per kid. You know, it's not like you're going to have, you know, um, packed stands, you know, and your, all your friends there and all that stuff in the town there. It's it's a whole different ball game. So, anyways, we were waiting, you know, for it, and then fall hit and, you know, there was no season. So, um, you know, we're still waiting. We're still we still can't get into the weight room. They won't let us in. So, you know, we had to, um, you know do other avenues. We still were, um, you know, having captain's practices. And then obviously we had news that, you know, there was going to be a fall two season in between winter sports and spring sports starting in March. Um, so, you know, we were waiting for that super excited. And then first couple of weeks, you know, it's great to be back with everyone, but then, um, we have some COVID cases on the team, have a week off, we have a week where we can't even practice anymore. And then next few days later, we have our first game against Somerset, you know, and, you know, that was, we, we, they beat us and they, you know, they were obviously more prepared than us. They had a, they had a, um, you know, they, they obviously didn't have a week gone of practice because of COVID and they had a scrimmage before. I'm not making excuses. No, no, it's, it's, valid, it's, it's valid just, points. it's just context. You know what I mean? So, um, but after that, um, the senior, I think the seniors, some of them, um, especially the seniors realize, okay, this is my last season. I only have, you know, five or six more games after this. It's, you know, it's time that we um, get the wheels turning here. And uh, and past that, we went through Case and Bourne and Fairhaven and all these other teams. And, you know, we went six and one that year, won six games in a row. And our last four games, we played the same two teams. Um, it went um, Bourne, Fairhaven, Bourne, Fairhaven. We beat them, beat Fairhaven in the championship and we got a well-deserved, in my opinion, um, SEC championship. And, you know, some people will say, you know, is it really a legit championship? I would say, yeah, we beat every team in our conference and half of them twice, you know. So to see that the seniors who worked so hard, right, who who put in the work, put in the effort to get that reward of, you know, standing on your home field as a champion. You know, you're graduating two months. You're going to be gone, right? To see that, you know, it was great to see on their sake. You know, it's something you want to repeat. Yeah, I think it, it's really, it's awesome that they were able to get like something back to play a little bit. Like, because my heart went out to those. Because like, my senior season, like, we made the playoffs. We we lost. We got fucking smacked on Thanksgiving. But like, yeah. to be able to have those things was like that's what. Because at least in Seekonk, for people who don't who aren't from Seekonk, um, the Thanksgiving game is like the big game where you yeah. have alumni coming back, you have family in town, like. It's this big thing between uh, Dayton Rehoboth and Seekonk, Massachusetts. And it's just, it's very, it's one of the, I forget, it's one of the more, most tenured uh, Thanksgiving games in, in Massachusetts. Yeah. And the fact that I think COVID was the first year they didn't have it in like years. Like yes. it's been a very, yeah. very long time. So like it, 
to not have that game, man, like, I still track that stuff. I'm 26 years old and I still look at Seacock uh, uh, and Dayton on Thanksgiving. I always pay attention to yeah, that because yeah. it's just part of you. Like, if you've been a part of the process and the community of playing football for Seacock, like, especially if you enjoyed it and you loved it like I did, like, you always look back to that stuff. That's oh, something. Yeah. That's something that... I value and like I value that culture that, that was created and because like I was part of that like I was a part of the Seacon history like I, I was there I played sports in that field like I battled with my brother just like you're battling with yours mm-hmm. and like it's it's a forever growing link it's like we're you're part of the Seacon community I think we have a really yeah. great community that people honestly don't appreciate like it's interesting how connected the alumni are to the players, you know, because they walk through the same halls. They played on the same field, even though we're in a turf field. But, you know, it's it's interesting to see that. And for the like people who aren't from Seacock or DR, they don't understand how big that game is or people who don't play football. Mm-hmm. It's not some other game, you know, to the kids who are playing in it and the parents and the fans. It's the biggest game of the year. Bigger than any playoff game, in my opinion, is the Thanksgiving game. You have both towns there watching it, rooting for their teams, a long, a long rivalry between the two towns, technically three towns, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but um, your long rivalry between the two schools. And it's something you got to appreciate if you're from the town, uh, either town, because it's, it's, Great to see, you know, these best best players versus these best players, you know, tee off against each other. And it's a game, if you play in, you're never going to forget it. It's not an ordinary game. You know, waking up on Thanksgiving and playing football in front of your friends and family, that's something you don't forget. Oh, absolutely. And, like, I'll never forget it. I'm pretty sure it was Kyle Rose ran all over us that day. We got smacked. Like, because we, it sucked for us. I don't know if how... It was for you, but when we lost out of the playoffs, a lot of the kids lost um, motivation, and it, it rolled into the thing. We got the consolation game. We yeah. lost that game. It, it rolled into Thanksgiving. Guys were kind of hurt, and we're like sick of it, and like we didn't play our best ball. Like we had a bunch of people playing positions that weren't normally playing those positions, and we end up we weren't mentally a lot of a lot of us weren't mentally in the game, and a lot of emotions were too high, and we just we didn't play our best ball, and it sucked because like yeah. we were we were a great team, and like. We had a lot of great athletes and we were coached well. We just didn't put it all together at times. And like, it was unfortunate to have because we, they changed the the way the conferences was. And I was telling you a little bit about that for my junior and senior year. So we had a better chance of going to play in Gillette. Like it was yeah. like on the table. Like when we were looking at it, we're like, we can do this. Like it's there. And like people, some, I, I just don't think a lot of the guys understand. And I don't know if you feel this way. A lot of the guys just don't understand how easy and obtainable this is. If everyone just comes together as yeah, a unit, like that's something you got to realize. And it's tough because there's, there's the kids who really, you know, put in the work and they really do care. And their in their, their mindset is we got to get to Gillette. You know, we got to get through the playoffs and get to Gillette. And then there's the kids who, there who are just there to wear the Jersey. And yeah. it's tough, you know, because when you're, when you're playing and you see, you can see the drop off the kids who decided to not, Put in the effort, and now when you're when you're losing to a team, and you're seeing it's because of some kids who decided not to put into the effort, not not um you know trying to go after anyone, but <clears throat> no, when no. You, you're when you play honest, football, is in high school you have an obligation to your to your teammates, <clears throat> and it's not just you know you know be there for them. It's to also you know do everything you can to put your team in the best place it can be to win. And when you're slacking in the off season, it's it's you're doing a disservice right to to um your team it's kind of like um don't coaches will say that when you're conditioning right if you're going easy you're cheating your, your future self and being a better player right that's facts and you know by by not you know putting in that work you're, you're cheating your, you're cheating out your teammates because they're the ones putting in the work and we're only as strong as our weakest link it's cliche but it's true and you see that when you play football when you know the 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 player doesn't work that hard of the players it, it's um you can see the drop off definitely no I don't, no I don't think you're wrong in saying that i 100 percent i went through the same thing in in my experience playing football and i think a lot of people would attest especially wherever whatever town you play football in that some people don't understand or don't have the passion for the game, and that's fine. You don't have to yeah. love football like that. But there are people who do, who are playing it. And I looked at it like it was like life or death. Like football was my life. It's everything that I thought about at that time. Like, mm-hmm. and I don't regret it at all. Like it was, it was my personality. <laughs> like I jokingly say that. Like, and it, <laughs> it, it was. I, I don't regret any of that because it, it taught me so many val- valuable life lessons. And like I can, I've carried on. And in the relationships that I, I formed while playing these sports are to this day. I've had so many people 
on this podcast that I played football with. Yeah. And we formed that relationship from like when I was playing, we were like Seekonk Tigers. Like, yeah, and then yeah, it changed yeah. into the Warriors yeah. and everything. So, like, this is like from beginning to like adults now. So, it's like the relationships are so valuable, but it can be so, so frustrating when just people just they want to wear the jersey, they want to just have the attention of playing football like they're on the team yep. like especially if the team is successful like mm. you, they enjoy that success i yep. mean i think it's part of human nature too that people do like attention like i'd be lying if i didn't say i like attention mm-hmm. but like it's it's frustrating when you do take it that seriously and i can tell you do and like that's it resonates with me because i took it that exactly, seriously exactly because you only play high school football once in your life mm. obviously the four years you play it but like yep. it's a one time thing you don't get it back no so I don't think a lot of people truly grasp it until it's gone. I don't know if they still do it, but the usually the they I think it was like the Wednesday practice or the Tuesday practice before Thanksgiving, they would bring people back and at least when I was playing, they would bring some alumni back. Yeah, we had would, that this year. It was yeah. Good. And that paints the picture because like it really does mean that much. And it's like I still think about I still talk about the games. Like I remember yeah. <clears throat> when we were freshmen. I don't they got rid of freshman team, right? For you guys. So it, I don't know if they got rid of it. We just didn't have enough kids. Yeah. We barely have enough for a JV, so it's a whole different dynamic. Because when I came in, we had one of the bigger freshman classes that played. Yeah. And obviously once you get up to like junior and senior year, half those kids don't play anymore. Exactly. But like when we played freshman year, I want to say it was like maybe close to 30 kids like and that's a lot for seekonk like yeah. a lot 30 freshmen that was a lot and yeah. i'm i'm definitely overselling it's probably like 25 but <clears throat> we were we lost like we lost one game we tied one game like we were met, we had so much fucking talent and a lot of it was ego driven that people weren't getting the ball or they weren't playing the positions they want to play people didn't buy in all the time but like we were so talented that we'd win and i'll never forget we played dr under the lights as freshmen on our field on a, i think it was like a, i think it was our because freshmen played thursday i think it was so we had thursday people were there and we spanked them like 33 nothing like oh. and like it was the coolest feeling to experience that as a freshman because like this is what you're going to experience friday night lights and like mm-hmm. to me that was so awesome to see because i grew up going to the games as a freshman, being the water boy, like working my way up sophomore year, playing JV, grinding that out, getting the chance as a junior to play when coach Crawford came into the mix. And we could, we could talk about that now and transition yeah. to that. Like how was the coaching change for you? Cause I know that's a very difficult thing from my experience. We went from wing T to a straight vertical offense. So how is it for you to go from coach, Car- Car- excuse me, coach Crawford's offense to coach Asley. So shout out him. He's amazing yeah. coach. And I'm glad that they brought some Seacon people yeah. back. And yep. Shout out Joe Tex as well. I yeah. had his brother, Jacob Tex here on the podcast as well. Yeah. So check out that episode. But how was that experience for you? So, yeah, just like you mentioned, Vernon's offense was a lot of passing. And we, we always had, we always had the team for that. We had our, we had a great QB. We had a great wide receiving set. We had running backs that could, um, you know, catch the ball out in the open. So the offense, when it came to Vernon, was always we're we're going to pass the ball over them because we have the talent to do that, and not many high school teams can do that. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, and then playing in that for two years, right? And then it's a whole different thing when we have the arrival of Coach Ashley. Um, it's 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 not like a ground and pound offense, but it's definitely a, a pretty balanced offense and passing the ball and running the ball. Obviously, as a lineman, I'm big on running the ball. It's fun, you know, (laughs) exactly. Um, So that may be a little biased to me, but, you know, if I could run wedge every single play, I would run wedge every single play. But, and then the wide receiver's like, well, you know, how are we going to get the ball? So, (laughs) but um, no, so um, it's a whole different offense. It's not just the offense. The coaching style is completely different. Um, Not saying one's better or worse, but, you know, it's different, right? So um, that was, that was definitely cool to have um you know someone who played at seacock coach um you know someone who coached that case you know come here because you know he, coach Azure will sometimes get that from his players how he used <laughs> to coach that case for a few years um but you know it, it's definitely cool had coach tex come back obviously both of them are alumni um coach tex used to obviously coach as well before and um so you know it was cool you know it, it is tough i have to say having a coaching change ideally you have the same coach same coaching staff four years you know mm-hmm. by your third or fourth year you get you, you know you know the wheels are turning but you know things happen and um so when you get into that new coaching staff it's time to adjust a little bit because the program's different so um the team considering we're, we're a junior heavy team we were a junior heavy team considering that we had a whole new you know coaching staff and a few new players um i think that we did a pretty good job adjusting to it i mean so we went out, we started 2-0, and 
And um, obviously, we fell off. We had three or four games that were pretty bad. We had one um, close game against Case, obviously our rival. Huge game um, because obviously Coach Agile used to coach there, you know. And um, uh, 2019, (laughs) we knocked them out out of the playoffs in the first round after they um, crushed us at our homecoming game. So there's been bad blood. You know, you could say for a few years now, it's kind of turning into a rivalry. Um, so, you know, they beat us on our home field right after they beat us. Their fans came onto the field and all that. So it's it's something that you don't forget seeing that. Oh, yeah. You, 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 I'd, I'm never going to forget that. As you shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so um, th- we had that. And then we had a few, you know, tougher teams like Dennis Yarmouth. Um, pretty good team. Had to play some, uh, Ponequit, which was pretty good this year. Mm-hmm. So, um and then we get down, we've, you know, played Bourne, which, you know, usually the team is stereotypically not the best, you know, small school, small program. Mm-hmm. So, but you give them credit that the kids show up, you know, they work hard. <laughs> but, um, and then, you know, somehow we didn't make it into the playoffs. Three and five, I believe. We made it in the playoffs. We were the 16th seed, right? So we're playing the number one seed first game. And we have to go like two and a half hours to play a team called Stoneham, right? They they have and they have this kid who's like six six, two ninety, <laughs> right? And I'm like, oh Dang. great, yeah, I mean, great. This is gonna be great. And Boston College, <clears throat> me, I believe. So like, this is gonna be great. So um, obviously, you know, we we lost, we got crushed, but that is one of the games in which I'm the most proudest of to be able to you know play with those guys because I saw how hard they were fighting and how much they cared. Right. It wasn't even though we lost, you, you think, why would you be so happy? about? I wasn't happy about it, but I was I was proud to be a member of the team seeing the fight these guys had knowing going into it. We're probably going to lose. These guys are bigger than us so that, you know, and in the fact that we still fight that uh, fought them, you know, it was it was definitely something impressive to see. Um, and then obviously we had we lost to DR in overtime, which, again, is something you're not going to forget losing to DR in no, overtime, especially since it was the first game in a couple of years first Thanksgiving game. So, um, but no, I think, um, in terms of coaching change, you know, it's been great to have, you know, coach Aji and the new coaching staff, um, definitely, you know, missed the old coaching staff. It was good. Um, you know, yeah, it's a lot of good memories, you know? Um, but you know, I, I think next year is going to be a really good year for Seekonk football and um, new turf field. We got a new weight room. Um, we're going to have a very senior heavy team that's been playing with each other in all sports for 10 years. So I think next year you're going to see something special. Yeah, and I I definitely am looking forward to that honestly. And you you know, I'm I'm 26 years old and I still don't I still remember the the, the yeah. DR losses. So it's something you don't forget and like you shouldn't. And it's good experience to have those losses to have those seasons where like it doesn't go as planned necessarily because it's learning lessons for when it's your senior year and you have the group of guys that you say that you guys have like a senior heavy team like that's what you want going into senior year yeah. guys that have sticked together that bought into the program that are ready to win and you need that experience to like be successful you're you need to lose games to win like i think kind of like the way i always look at life too is like without any of the losses that we take you're never going to appreciate the wins like you need those low points in life because if you don't, if you're just always constantly winning, you're just going to take it for granted. And then when you lose, it's going to be very like, uh, like devastating to you basically when you mm. do lose. So I, I literally, to be honest with you, I had the same exact experience when we, we went from I, what was it, coach Whalen to coach Crawford because it was, com- it was a completely different change because coach Whalen had been one of the coaches for years. Like yeah. he, he, worked really hard to introduce wing T like it's what they ran in pop Warner for years. Yeah. Like that's what we grew up on. So when you come to high school, you knew the offense. Mm-hmm. So coach Crawford comes in, brings this spread offense and everyone's like, what the hell is this? Yeah, yeah. Like I played running back most of my life. I had to play slot. I play, I, okay. I think we called it, I think it was H. I think it was X, H, Z and Y yep. were, the, were the, the positions. And I played H and then I got some running back in there too. And I played linebacker. I was one of the smallest dudes, but I played mm-hmm. linebacker. I just, I loved the, that's why I love football was I could prove myself on the football exactly. field and I might be one of the smallest dudes out there, but I'm going to fucking hit you. Like mm-hmm. I'm going to work my ass off and prove myself to you that I'm good enough to be on this field with everybody yeah. else. And like, that's what I always loved about the game. But having that change was very difficult a lot of guys weren't were kind of i don't know like i love the old system like i don't know about this yeah. like and then obviously you get parents and politics involved oh, yeah, and that it that, that ruins it yeah that parents stay out of sports like it's just so frustrating like it's always been a thing like obviously parents want to see their kids succeed they want to see their kids having fun they want to see their kids playing but let the coaches coach 
let the coaches coach. Like that's something I've always like agreed with is like, if you want to be a coach as a parent, go try to be a coach. Mm -hmm. See if they'll take you on, like go do that. But these guys that coach Ashley, coach Tex, they've coached at different levels. They understand the game. They've played the game in like modern terms. Like they, they're not that old. They're, they're I'm pretty close to age of them. I don't think I'm old. So like they recently have played, like they understand they've played at high levels. So like, you just got to trust and buy in and like, it sounds like you guys are starting to do that. And like, it's, it's hard. It's definitely hard. And like, it's interesting to see, cause you're literally in the same position that I was. You're going into a senior, senior year, yep. a senior heavy team. Um, thankfully the COVID restrictions are somewhat loosening. So yeah, you guys yeah. are able to get back together yep. and like still train and work hard. And it's, it's going to be something special, man. And if you guys do it right, like you have all the opportunities in the world to be successful. And like, I think, I think you guys are going to do it. And I believe in Seekonk and, I want you guys to to bring bring it back home yeah, for us because like yeah. definitely as someone as alumni, I'm always watching. Like yep. I'm always checking the Twitter. I'm always checking the stuff out there, seeing seeing these kids come up. So I'm at the age where I don't recognize a lot of the names, and if I do, it's a sibling. Yeah. Like, so, yeah. and it's rare for me to know someone, and I knew you because yep. you were very talented. Yep. Like you noticed the people. Like I knew um was it J T Moran was the yep, quarterback, was and like, then I knew yeah. LeBeau because yep. his sister was in, he, in my grade. Yep. Two talented dudes. I knew I heard of Nathan Clark because he yeah, was fucking mad talented. talented. Dude, yeah. Um, there was a lot of people that I had recognized the name. Um uh you guys had a one of the Frenches was a few Campbell years back. French. Yep, he was very talented yep. and his brother was very talented when he played. Yeah. Like so like there was guys that I, I knew. It's always cool to see that because like I remember them being like like children, like babies oh, almost, yeah. and now like they're kicking ass in Seacong football, and it's cool to see that tradition still going on. Um I want to take, we're getting the back end of the podcast and I know you want to talk about this, but the impact of social media in, in your life as you're growing up now, because it's, it's very different than when I was growing and we grew up when I was growing up, uh, Facebook was just starting and they had my space. Like I was lucky enough to grow up when social media wasn't really a thing completely yeah. yet. It was like, as we were going through high school, it was starting to become more prevalent. And then obviously into college, it became more of a thing, but as you've gone, grown up, it's always kind of been here. So like yep. talk, I know you want to talk about this, so I'll kind of give you the floor for this. Yeah. So social media, you know, it can be great and it can be terrible. And, um, you know, it's something that if you, if you have a hard time controlling, it, it's going to control you in that, you know, you're, you're almost addicted to it. I know plenty of people who are addicted to social media and it's like, it's sad to see because, you know, it's ruining your potential of succeeding in so many different aspects of your life and you're limiting that to some screen. And we often forget it's just a small computer screen. But with that small computer screen, you can do stupid stuff, you can do great stuff, and you can do everything in between, right? So you need to be extremely prudent when you're when you're posting, you're texting, and all that stuff and what you're saying. Because when you're texting someone, for example, I'll take texting as an example, it's extremely hard to tell the person's intentions, their emotions, everything. But when we're talking like this, me to you, we can see your facial reactions, mm -hmm. your body language, and all. you can't see body language over text, right? You can't see that. You can type all the emojis you want, but you can't see the person's reaction, right? You know what I mean? So I'm not a big proponent of texting, in my opinion. I'd prefer to call or FaceTime, even better in person, right? But but at the, but obviously calling, in my opinion, is better um, because, you know, at least you can hear, their, hear that. But texting is something... You got to be very, very careful with it. can be great to communicate quickly, like communicate with your friends, communicate, you know, reach out to people from across the country. I mean, that's that's across the globe, right? All cr across the you know world. It's something amazing to think about. And it's sad to see it's, it can be misused so easily. It can become an addiction. It can ruin people's lives in some cases. So um, in terms of social media, um, I would just, words of advice, I guess, is be extremely careful in what you're doing and remember that, um, you know, remember how you're putting yourself out there and how this is going to make people perceive you because like if it's so easy for something you posted stupid a while ago to come back and, and haunt you. Right. And that's why you need to be, um, careful when you're sending out all these messages. Cause like everyone can see it, right. A anyone can see it. So, and in terms of, Hey, when you want to communicate with someone, you know, it's better, in my opinion, give them the call, you know, give them FaceTime or, hey, you want to meet in person. But if you're going to have some conversations with people, um, definitely, you know, make make um, a really big effort to try to, you know, make it, you know, as um, I guess you could say real, you know, real 
Because texting, it might, it's not really a real conversation. You know, you're just putting words into a phone and then you're receiving words into a phone. I, I mean, you're communicating, but I wouldn't say it's a conversation. There's a big difference between communicating to someone and having a conversation with someone, right? Mm-hmm. Like, for example, animals, they can just make noises and they're communicating to each other. But then the animals can't have conversations with each other. They can't. Right. So that's kind of what, like, what we're doing on our phones is we're communicating. You know, sometimes, you know, it's misread, but you're not having a real conversation. And this is why I am like your podcast so much is because you're having real conversations with real people, your everyday people, right, from all aspects of life. And it's something to really appreciate because it's not like, you know, you're having them, cook, you know, you just, you know, having them call in and, you know, it's it's in person. It's real. It's authentic. And that's something I appreciate about this is because, like, when I had the opportunity to come on the podcast, I'm like, of course, you, you get to have a real authentic conversation with someone. And that's something with COVID that has been gone away, in my opinion, is the real authentic conversation has been replaced with you know, talking to people over a PlayStation microphone or text or whatever it be. So social media, there's so much you can say about it. But at the end of the day, just realize it's it's just on some little computer screen. You know what I mean? Yeah, honestly, that is one of the best like kind of like soliloquies that I've heard on the podcast. And the way you just put that, I'm actually going to steal that. Um, the way you even talked about like, the, the animals and the communication versus conversation. That is so, you articulated that so, so well, in my opinion, because that is so true. And that is something that I I repeatedly say on the podcast is a lot of us nowadays, we're talking to each other, but we're not Mm -hmm. understanding. We're not like listening to each other. And and, and that's a big problem. We're not having these face-to-face conversations. And uh, again, I appreciate you saying those kind words about the podcast, because that is the basis of the foundation that I've built this off of is the in-person stuff. Like I didn't want to do virtual i didn't want to do call and stuff and like i may do it in the future because there's a lot of people on social media that i've been connecting with yep. that want to like talk to me and i want to talk to them so that might open the door where where we can't have a face-to-face but we can still do it so like that's where like facetime and stuff is very yeah, useful exactly and that goes into what you're saying there's some benefits from it and it's be it's learning and figuring out which way is the best way to use social media because Definitely. i've always said from the beginning of the podcast Social media is a tool for communication. It is not the only avenue of communication. Mm, it's a tool. Yeah, because for me, how I look at this podcast, it is a way for me to have legit real life conversations with people. There just happens to be microphones, it happens to be lights, it happens to be a camera. Like but the conversation that we're having, we would have off air. Exactly. Like if, exactly. if people could have seen our conversation beforehand, yeah, there's some personal stuff that I'm not gonna yeah, put yeah, out yeah, there. Yeah. Because we all deserve some right to privacy. Yeah, exactly. But like, it's, this is essentially what we were talking about. It all is. Fair. It is. And that's how I want to do these. And look at us right now. Like, we didn't really know each other before this. And we were creating mm. a new connection, a yep. new bond, a new relationship off just like that. Just because we know certain people and you've seen the podcast. Yep. And like, you reached out to me that you're like, hey, I really enjoy this. And like, as soon as I see someone do that, I show love back. Because yep. I know how difficult is to for some people to show love because like yeah by putting myself out there i know that people could take this and run the opposite way with this oh jared's loving it he wants attention or jared wants this or he wants that or you just want real conversations you know what i mean people can people are going to interpret what you do on social media however they want to it's out of your control but what you do control is the content that you put out there Mm -hmm. and i think it's very smart of you or i'm trying to think of the i can't think of the word um, self-aware, I think is the word I'm actually looking for to know that at this young of an age and that what you put out there can come back to haunt you. And like, mm-hmm. I'm very big in TikTok. I'm, I'm very open about it. Yep. I, I post honestly relationship stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I, I know my, um, image on TikTok can be seen as like a sad boy shit. Yeah. Like I know people who look at me that way and I'm fine with that. Yeah. But what people don't see on the other hand is when I'm doing that content, I'm doing it for people that need that content like i've gotten Mm. so many messages from people saying thank you for expressing how i feel thank you for making me feel like i'm not the only one feeling like this and i've actually had people say that i helped them not contemplate like self-deletion thoughts like suicidal thoughts and yeah just just have someone say that to you that you had an impact on them like that crazy but people don't see that they see what you post and they instantly were going to judge you so it comes with a grain of salt you have to kind of like survey the land and kind of accept what's going to come with it. And I've always said this social media is a resume, whether you want to believe it or not, like where we are and where we're going as a society, the internet and social media is not going anywhere. 
So how I look at it is I'm going to put my best foot forward. I'm going to try. I'm going to make mistakes. I record hour-long podcasts. I talk a lot. I'm yeah. going to say stupid shit. I'm going to get things wrong, and I'm going to mess up. Exactly. But it's owning up, being willing to be open-minded, to talk to people who do things that are different than you, to accept that you might be wrong on certain points, and it's it's okay to be wrong. And people are so afraid to say the wrong things nowadays, and I, I, I applaud you for having the vulnerability to come on here and say the stuff that you've said so far, because it's not easy to do this like yeah just just behind the camera the lights like you're yeah. like damn it's a pretty dope setup and like it, it can be intimidating to a lot of people and at your age to have the confidence to do this man i don't think i i, I didn't have that confidence when i was that yeah young. well what we're missing in our society is authenticity that's something we're missing and what i see here is authenticity it's just a conversation that happens to be recorded and it's the same type of conversation we were having before that you know and it's something you really got to appreciate for example you know your tiktok you have to appreciate whether you see content or not, you have to, whether you agree with it or not, you have to appreciate it's most likely that person giving their authentic self out. You know, whether you agree with it or not, that's a whole different scenario. Mm. But we're lose, what we're losing value of is authenticity because what we see a lot, and this ties back to social media, is a lot of, not, I'm not saying people are fake, but the, but the no, way that- I'll say people are fake. <laughs> but the way they're portraying themselves is a fake image of themselves in which either they want to be seen as or- you know, they want other people to see them as or they want to be, you know, and it's sad because, you know, in person, it's really hard to portray yourself in a different scenario because eventually people are going to know how you are and who you are. But on social media, it's kind of like a tool, like you said, is that you it's a way you can portray yourself. And some people use it um, to their advantage and some people use it to their disadvantage. But at the end of the day, um, you kind of have control over, you know, how you put yourself out there. And that's something you have to be very careful about. Yeah, no, I 100% agree with that. And and we are wrapping up on the podcast. I do have one more question yeah. for you. Um, so this question pretty much is going to be, what would your advice be to someone who wants to pursue their passion? So you want to learn more about it because one, you want to make sure it's actually your passion because we've all liked things before that we don't like anymore, right? I'm sure I can think of plenty of things off the top of my head in which I love so much and I don't really care for them anymore, you know? So one, learn more about, you know, what that thing is that you think you're like. Because in some cases, let's say it's like you're going to go major for it in college. You do not want to waste thousands of dollars in student loan debt over a passion that you don't actually like, right? So get as many experiences in that field that you like. So kind of like a litmus test, right? Because there's a lot of people who didn't, you know, have that. And now, you know, they're in extra college debt because they wanted to major in something they thought they liked. But they never really got enough exposure to it. It's like, oh, you know, may, you know I, maybe I would like to do this thing. And then they go major in it. And it's not wrong, but it's risky because you can, you can throw away money. And money isn't everything, but again, it's another tool. Money, social media, money, they're tools. So, yeah, you have to get to know um, what you like and, and you have to master the skills that surround it. For example, reading, you know, you got to master, you know, and writing. Sorry. If you want to master how to be a great writer, great author, First thing to do is reading. You want to read what other authors are writing, right? And you have to practice that and put that into practice and write. Because maybe you're writing and you're sitting there at the computer saying, wow, I really don't like this. This is boring. I want to go do something else. You know, and that's that's important to know before you put all your time and energy in that. Because like you said, you don't get your time back. There's no refunds. It's already spent the second it's gone, right? So so you really want to make sure that before you throw away money and, and, and um, you know, college tuition towards that, you're making sure you like it. And the next is get involved with that, especially with social media. It can be a tool for good is that you can get involved with a lot of fields and a lot of things via social media, real contacting people via social media. And it's, and it's a really great thing. It's a blessing. It's a great thing. Um, so get involved there, learn, learn more and consume as much information as you can in that field because you're bound to pick up some of it. Right. You may not pick up all of it. You may not. You're not going to, you know, be a master in that certain field. You're not going to be a master of writing. You're not going to be a master of public speaking in the matter of seconds. It's going to take some time. But the more information you consume, if you're attentively listening, the more you're going to be able to to hear and then you can put into practice. So, yeah, you want to make sure you actually like it. You want to um, expose yourself to it, you know, um, and really it's going to take work. 
it's going to, there's no other way around it. It's going to take a lot of work. It's, and for people who lift weights, it's <clears throat> lifting weights teaches a great life lesson is that how hard it's going to be and how much work it's going to take. But eventually you'll see results. And if you work so hard in a certain field, you're going to see results. So if you decide, you know what, <clears throat> this may not be fun. I may not like it, but you know what, I'm going to put all my effort into this. And one of the, the most important thing I would say is do not have one foot in and one foot out. Because when you put 50% of your energy into it, you're not maximizing your potential in which you could be, right? So let's say, for example, you want to start a podcast. You just put your phone on the screen and you just start talking. I mean, that's really not going to get you much. Are you going to go both feet in and put a little money into it, right? Maybe get some minor equipment and see how it goes, see how you like it, right? And then you can um, decipher whether you want to continue with it or not. So, um, <clears throat> you know, definitely... If you're gonna, if you want to do something, you have to go all in on it. You can't like, you know, you can't, it's like, what's more, what's the more fun way to get into a pool? Belly flop into the pool, you know, uh, you know, fly, go into the pool or is you don't want to climb down the ladder, right? And be like, oh no, it's too cold, right? Because that's what's going to happen when you climb down the ladder. It's like, uh, I'm going to wait a little bit. It's a little bit too cold. And meanwhile, there's people jumping in and having fun. So are you going to jump in and, and get, get in on get in on this or are you just going to, you know, wait by the poolside, wait by the beach and just as everyone's progressing with their lives, you're over there sitting to the side because you didn't want to get into the water. Man, I love that. There's so many great points in that. And I think you hit hit the nail on the head with uh, the advice for pursuing their passion. But Josh, thank you so much for coming on this podcast. I appreciate you so much for being vulnerable enough to share your life story and everything you're going to. And I wish you nothing but success in your future as well as this season and your career, man. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Chad. I appreciate you having on. It was great to have a, an authentic conversation with someone. And I love what you're doing. It's really important. Man, I really appreciate that. And now for you guys, uh, I'll give you guys a little spiel. If you like the podcast, please rate, review, subscribe. You can share it with your friends, your family, your grandma. Uh, check it out at the carolconnection.simplecast.com. Also available Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all the major listening platforms. So until next time, guys, peace. Peace.